Good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, into your phones and into your space. Thank you for welcoming me. And um, if you'd like to click the thumbs up or the thumbs down, you'd like to share or subscribe, interact with my subscribers and new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. And existing subscribers, thank you for your, your support. Now, today I was just thinking, you know, me and my imaginative mind, I was thinking about them talking about dirty money. And, you know, for a while they've been wanting us to become a cashless society. I then started thinking, OK, I've got a little bit of cash at home. And then I thought, you know, enough to do my nails or to pay, you know, like the um, people who wash your cars. They deal with cash only. And then I started thinking, well, if we go into a um, electronic system, especially for the nail companies, they are going to have to report on every penny that they receive. And you're not, they're, not, they're not going to be able to take cash. And with washing our cars, how is that going to work out? And the thing is, I think it's all deliberate. The thing is with cash is that anybody can have it and the government doesn't know where it's going. They can't track it, can they? So if somebody's giving somebody money underneath the table, as we call it in the UK, which means money, you know, somebody's working on a hustle and they're coming to do a job for you and you pay them in cash, the government can't track that. And they want to be able to track every penny. That's the first reason. So... What better way to use the coronavirus to say the money is dirty and that we're transmitting the coronavirus through using money? But why aren't they doing it immediately? Why aren't they doing it now? If you know that, why haven't you put a ban on money? Or at least give people the time and the date when you're going to stop people from using cash. I've got a funny feeling it's got something to do with the two big events coming up. Easter and Mother's Day. They want people to spend money. They want people to spend cash if they have it. And they want it all to go around. And then what's going to happen? At some point, they're going to say to people, look, we're going to stop you using money because of the coronavirus. It's causing diseases and it's spreading the, um, it's spreading the virus. And you can no longer use cash. And if you've got cash, if I hope it's not a lot, but if you've got cash, you won't be able to use it. You'll be lumbered with it. You, you might be able to take it to the bank, but if there's a lockdown, how are you going to get from your house to the bank? The police are not going to deem that essential or an emergency. Then you can't say, oh, they've just turned down and I'm going to the bank. Well, I don't know. The bank, they might have... Uh, a leeway, they might give you a grace period at which you can take it back to the bank and, um, you know, make have it credited to your account. Because a lot of the elderly do not use credit cards or any kind of electronic format. They all use cash. And I don't know what's going to happen when they can't use cash because cash gives them a feeling of security. They know they've got it. They know it's in their hand. They know what it looks like. They know what it represents for them. So to take cash away is going to be really, really hard on them. But another thing, once they've got everybody um, thinking that it's a coronavirus, why we've had to give up cash, then comes a second um, trap. This is my imagination, remember, this is all hypothetical. But then comes a second trap. We've all got our money in the banks. We're all doing electronic transfers. And that is the only way we can get our money, electronically. And we pay electronically. And we've got this money in the bank that we've saved up, for some of us. We've got the money in the bank to set that we've saved up. We've got the money in the bank that we can pay our bills. But then you find that the only way you can access your money is if you have a chip. All of a sudden, everything starts falling into place. You're going to need a chip to access your money. 
and they know money is one of the most important things to you. It's how, what makes us survive. It's what how we buy food. It's how we buy resources. It's how we pay our bills. So, I think this coronavirus is a very handy virus indeed. Extremely handy. It turns us all into virtual beings where we communicate online. And we communicate and that we've got so used to using all these social networks and not speaking to our partners that all of a sudden everything's going to turn on its face. We're now going to be left with facing the reality of ourselves and the person that's in our space. All of a sudden, you haven't got those eight hours out of the house where you're at work and those eight, you know, the extra two hours traveling. All of a sudden, those 12 hours are added on to the time that you are with your spouse or your family members. So you'd better hope that the person who you're with is great, is a lot of fun, makes you laugh, is a good communicator. I believe in these times, it is so important to have somebody in your life that can make you laugh even under these dire circumstances. Somebody who can make you laugh or smile, somebody who can communicate with you and understand what you're going through and you can communicate with them and you feed back to each other and offload. And you're going to need tolerance as well because once you're isolated, you get all a lot of people saying, oh, I love being on my own. I love my own company. That's because it was a choice. When it becomes mandatory, that's a different thing. Do you really like yourself? How much do you like yourself? Can you stand to be by yourself, with yourself for 24 hours? How does that feel? Those of you who depend on your children or your grandchildren coming around and they're isolated. How does that feel? You, haven't, you can't live vicariously through them anymore. And then you haven't got the comfort of your money. So you have to kind of think about, well, you don't have to think about it. I am just talking out loud about a world without money, how this coronavirus has trickled down in so many pathways, in so many ways that affect so many individual lives. And you know what's interesting, this, this, um, sometime about 11 o'clock I decided I needed to return a couple of items to Next. And um, I'm now kind of thinking, do I need this? Do I really need that? It's a time when you really start, start taking stock of what is important. What's good, the positives about this coronavirus is you do start thinking about what is important. What do I really need? Do I really need this extra pair of slippers? Do I really need this extra jumper? Do you know? And then you have to, then for me, I just thought, well, I don't really need it. It's surplus. I'm going to take it back anyway. So I took it back. And then I thought to myself, you know what? It's the first time that the customer service took time to talk to me. Yeah, they were talking about the, the coronavirus, but it's, making people communicate and I was also listening to people as we're walking by people are talking to each other so you know, and people will be forced to talk to each other and so that is the good thing about it so especially if you're a good communicator and you you know you have a light spirit it's no point if you've got a heavy spirit and you're miserable and you're negative you don't want to be around people like that you want to be around people who, who can help you get through this period. And they need to have a light spirit. They can't have the spirit of um, negativity and lack. And a lot of people have that. So just surround yourself with nice people. Bear in mind that money is going to disappear sooner than you think. Probably... I foresee after Easter. So start kind of siphoning it off, put it where you need to put it, spend it if you need to spend it. And um, yeah, just don't hold on to it because there's nothing worse than having a lot of dosh in your house 
And then it becomes worthless because you can't use it. Nobody wants it because they can't get rid of it. And that is the way of the world. So we have all been primed for this moment. We've all been walking aimlessly in like little robots, like the Stepford, Stepford Wives. We've been walking aimlessly in. Oh, this is great. I've got a credit card. I've got a debit card. I can use one of these machines. I can use online banking. Oh, this is so convenient. I can do online shopping today. I got a, a um, an email from one of these large supermarkets saying, oh, you can book in advance. Um, we can't give you any orders now, but you can book in advance. So you go online, you put all your little orders in. When you go to the delivery slot for advance, it's shut down. So then you start thinking, oh, my God. That's why people are panicking. If people, if these um, supermarkets and everybody else meant what they said and had systems in place to set up what they say. So, OK, you're saying people can book in advance. When when you try to book in advance, and I was thinking about booking in for late next month or the month after, I think you can book up to 21 days in advance and you can't do it. What does that do to people's minds? Oh, my God. I can't, you know, I can't book online. I'm going to go to the shop and I'm going to fill up my basket. When I went about 11 o'clock, there was nobody there. Well, there wasn't. There were people there sauntering around. But I said to the lady, I said, it's pretty quiet in here. She goes, oh, they're all here at six o'clock. She said, if you want to come to the supermarket, come about now. But then you can't go until you're going to get what you want. I didn't really need anything. I'm kind of walking through the supermarkets and I'm observing and I saw a pregnant lady and I thought oh my god it's a tough time to be having a baby it's a tough time when you're looking you're gonna be having a baby and you're looking at the pamper shelves and there's no pampers there's no nap nappies there's no um what you call it the things that they use for babies sterilizing tablets they've all gone can you imagine having a baby at this time it must be so scary. So, but one thing I have noticed is that people are talking to people, to others, a bit more. Instead of shoving through and busting past and all that kind of stuff. Yes, you have the ignorant people who have no, they probably be ignorant anyway. And those are the people that the police are going to be waiting for. That's why the police are needed outside the shops for those ignorant people who are fighting and going on bad and, and thoughtless and selfish that's why the police are outside the um, supermarkets, because people can't contain themselves and behave like dignified human beings. Anyway, I've shifted my conversation from cash to this. But anyway, I'm going to stop there. Have a wonderful day. Keep safe. Don't overeat. Don't decide to have a baby <laughs> because now is not the time. You know, people are being at home now. You know what they're going to be up to. So they reckon there's going to be a baby boom. They reckon there's going to be divorces because people can't really stand one another. And it's true, people are with people and they can't stand them. Oh, what a life. What is happening here? So I'm just telling people, just check yourself. Know who you are. Like who you are because you're going to be with yourself for a long time. or well, at least minimum three months, according to Boris, but it's more likely to be six months. So whoever you are with, you better learn to like them. Because it's too late to get out now. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.